his supporters are deplorable. You've been traveling, traveling this country. You know the disaffection is real. You know the pain is real and that there are a lot of white Americans who feel forgotten uh, by what others celebrate as diversity and multiculturalism. They see him as a proxy, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant proxy. Yeah, but he's playing them for suckers. I mean, he's the, the, the message uh, that he's telling uh, to these Americans is, uh, yeah, you're not making enough money. Yeah, your houses are, are housing is becoming unaffordable. College education is out of reach for your kids, and your job may be automated away in 10 years. But your big problem in life is political correctness. That's what he's trying to get people to believe. And sure, a lot of people voted this way last time around because they had been so let down by people uh, on both sides of the political spectrum that they decided to just vote to burn the house down uh, because they felt disaffected or because they didn't like our nominee. Uh, and this isn't to excuse the racism or the misogyny or the xenophobia in that campaign. Uh, but we should look at why those things found more fertile ground than usual without excusing it. And I think what we've got to now say to these voters is, okay, you voted to burn the house down. Now the house is on fire. But he has not done one thing to make your life better. And if you think your problem is brown people, uh, when your job is about to get automated away and you don't have the retirement savings you need in order to actually have a dignified uh, remainder of your life, uh, then uh, you're not going to make You'll it. You'll say I give you the best economy ever and I'm finally speaking the truth. Yeah, the best economy ever. I mean, under Obama, unemployment goes, what, from 10 to 5? Trump sees him go from 5 to 4, and uh, he, he thinks he's the one who, who, it's like the rooster in the morning, thinks he made the sun come up.